I can't really hear it right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear it right now. Hey, welcome everybody to this episode of Let's Smoke About It. I'm Mr. Editor Don Chicago and my fruity friends. Captain Daddy. Oh, Monkey Paws. Sorry, staring off into the distant wasteland that is over in that direction. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're sitting in the middle of a desert. In the middle of a desert of a hot 105 degree swamp. It is, that AC, though, it feels really good now. Yes, it does. Got that baby tuned up. Hot damn. It was 84 in this house the other day. Yeah, talk about rough. Talk about sweaty soup sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Sweaty soup sleeping and no banging because it's too hot to touch each other. So you just lay there. Yeah, it's with, fucking bleh. With the fan blowing on every nook and cranny that you have to try to cool you down. <laughs> it's sitting at my desk out here and I'm like, I'm like, man, I go outside. It's like it's probably like 75 outside and it's warm. I'm like, this ain't too bad. And I come in and it's like 85 still. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Why is it so hot? Our bathroom is really cold, though. That bathroom is like an icebox. Yeah, they had their own little cooler to walk into because there's no windows, so there's no way for it to go out. The door's always closed, so it just sits in there. Sits into a nice little icebox. Yeah, it's nice on one of those... Well, every day's been like over 100, so on one of those 100 days, every day. (laughs) Is this because of that climate change that their scientists were talking about? Yeah. I mean, or is that a bunch thing, of hoopla? The thing is that yes, we've had hot days in the past, but we're on course to break. I think the most, like the highest consecutive days, like yeah, the highest amount. Canada of broke a record fires. recently. How much? It was like fuck. It was like 120. Well, Canada. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure. Screw that. I'm gonna make sure my job <clears> keeps me out of the sun. I don't want to. Dive heat stroke. I was gonna say uh, you got really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> like right, right as the lucky. wave, like literally the day the wave hit, like when it started being over a hundred, didn't have to go out and build homes. Oh, I was so grateful. I'm like, oh thank god. I was like, oh my god, is <sighs> Captain gonna die? <laughs> is it because <laughs> the heat? Is this is where he dies? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more heat cramps, heat related cramps, than I've ever realized I would get because I thought I'd drink enough water. Oh, I was wrong. Did you eat enough bananas? Well, I eat a banana every morning for work. Hmm. I would eat a banana. I'd at least try to remember there's a couple days I'd miss and yeah. suffer if I didn't. But it's the water. I didn't keep up with the water. Mm-hmm. I would so all of a sudden start sweating cool where there would be no sweat, but I'd oh, be cool. Oh, man. Yeah, and then it would always start right in both elbows. It would cramp up to where my wrist would go down like this. And then I'm just kind of like stuck in a weird uh, T-Rex form. Mm-hmm. And then just pounding water after that. It was just it, mad cramp in the elbow. Just Dude, locked up T Rex. Because <laughs> I can feel it when I'm swinging a hammer. I can feel it just my my wrist not wanting to come back. Oh yeah. Because it's just like, ah, give. You probably have a pretty fast metabolism. Then you probably burn through all that energy and water and like fucking that. I guess because I go through <laughs> a gallon of the water. I'm waiting for the ice to melt. Drink through that. I'm thinking I'm drinking enough water. Like that combined with all the physical labor. Like right. Like having a really fast metabolism and having to be moving and burning energy like yeah. fucking rapid fire. In 105 fire. degree weather. <laughs> In 100 degree weather. <laughs> it always made me think about getting a camel back. Just wearing that and just mm-hmm. always sucking on water every well, movement. Just and <laughs> if they're, I don't know if camelbacks do this, but feeling the cold <clears throat> package against your back all day would help too. No, they're they're normally padded. That's what I thought. So you don't feel it against your back. Maybe that's what we need to do. We'll just make a little rubber tube. You camel just... camelbacks are great. I love them. They're great for hiking cuz they're they have some kind of they have a little bit of backpack space mm-hmm. so you can pack a little bit of stuff in them. But it's that water. It's like a 2 liter of water. Get you up and down. Especially if you throw some ice cubes in that. Mhm. Mm. Cold ass water. You need to make mobile ACs that go into your clothes. Is constantly blowing air through your clothes. That'd be fantastic. Just like a little, bring, your, this little backpack that you wear. That's a little generator to power the AC in your clothes, <laughs> but it's solar powered. <laughs> She's walking around right <laughs> outside. I'm just imagining you're just walking around in like solar panels, but you're cool. 
<laughs> because of all the electric fan and not only that but it gives a whole new meaning to the word parachute pants or parachute clothes to have all those little my suit fans. jackets just, just i mean i don't know panels. are you talking like microscopic between the threads ac or i was thinking like a, a fan <laughs> like oh built into pumps, the pumps into your shirt oh okay and your pants <laughs> <laughs> just think it like right on your back right above your tailbone mm-hmm. there's just a big old fan right in your jacket <laughs> if it was almost like a see if you could like f- a swamp cooler in a way if where you it could, could take find... the moisture out of the bag and then distribute that into cold air like throughout your clothes that'd be something well that here's here's the thing is if you could find a way to would do swamp ass <laughs> with that same thing <laughs> Like where you pull, I mean, where you pull you know the guys would go exactly for that. <laughs> that you could, you could go a lot of places with that. If you could pull the hot swampy ass and it's out of the pants, and you can try to put some cool air in there by pulling the hot and reverting it into cool, that'd be, that'd be huge right there. That would be huge because it's like no one enjoys swamp ass when you're only two hours into work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's only eleven. <laughs> but what's nice is uh, powder. You powder your balls a little bit and mm-hmm. powder your Get that monkey butt. butt. Yeah. You just Yeah, monkey butt. <laughs> I was thinking you get a bunch of lip of that powder in your hand and you just smack your nuts with it enough so that it just encases. <laughs> I had a coworker that would monkey butt every morning. Show up to you, work, go in the in the porta potty, monkey butt. You're gonna have to explain what that is. It's it's just it's just uh baby uh, butt powder. Oh. To prevent like chafing. Yeah, it's it's like a different brand. It's like gold bond. It's so. just literally a red butted monkey on the front of it, and it's called monkey butt. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, he he would always just slap on some monkey butt. I'm like, dude, swamp ass must suck for you like that. I couldn't chafing your ass all goddamn day. Plus, you're sweating your balls off down there. It's just unpleasant. You're wet and you're dry. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine that. Yeah, I'd rather be in liquid form all over rather than have areas of dry. Well, I would rather I would not want either. I well, yeah, don't I'm saying if but that's I That's what I'm saying you make you, you two, make the yeah. AC with the swamp ass to counteract that so the people who don't get the chafing problem. So, mm-hmm. so it's a swamp cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can you would it's you would market it as cooler. swamp cooler, just yeah. quotation swamp Yep, that's a <laughs> Billy Mays here with the swamp cooler. <laughs> with the swamp cooler. I imagine just a big old box in between your legs, so you're standing at kind of like a hinge, like you're riding a horse, your legs are bowed out. There's a big old AC mm-hmm. just in between your legs. <laughs> swamp cooler. You're just using like your inner thigh muscles and your hip muscles to like hold it <laughs> while you're walking around everywhere. I'm gonna give, I guess it keeps your balls cool too because it gives your balls something to rest on. Just sitting on that swamp cooler. Oh, that'd be. So, are you? Are we gonna turn this into like just a vent in the pants? So even like a fart would get blown back up. Well, or are we hoping to have it come down from the waistline? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about the farts. It'd be filtered, so you couldn't smell it. But it, so it'd just be like a like a. So I'm now thinking of just like a fan right where your butthole should be on the, a pants. No, right where your taint, kind of like your. your your, your whole Gucci taint area. <laughs> Gucci taint. Gucci taint. Call it Gucci. Call it Gucci. Call it taint. Whatever. Your little strip of... Where you where you were sewed together. You know right there? <laughs> where I was sewed together? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, but what? But yeah, like that's, mean? that's the where weird... sewed together. That was the weird... Uh, the swamp... For me, that's where the most intense swamp ass gets. It's just kind of down there where gravity pulls everything oh, down. Yeah. That's okay, like right where the crevices are. Yeah, where everything, where everything you just kind of down there. <laughs> so it's like if you can make some kind of vent to where it goes from your balls to your asshole, that vents everything <laughs> out right there. <laughs> it's just got these two little tubes one on each side of your of your balls going up past your taint right to your butthole. <laughs> I mean, if it cools it down and if it's comfortable. It's not stupid. Uh, I just, but that's that's the area <laughs> I'm working with. That's what I'm visualizing. I'm thinking I might just go towards like climate relief. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's easier to Let's fix just, the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Why invent something like this? Let's just let's just fix let's the just, problem. Yeah. That's a great idea. I love that. It really is. <laughs> I love that. 
environmentalist Don Chicago over here. He cares about the planet. But as you, as but he you. hates swamp bass. And so does Ace. Everyone hates swamp bass. I don't give a shit about a planet. I fucking... Human tree. I don't care. I'm tree. not going to be a live fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen the Don Cheadle Captain Planet miniseries on YouTube? I've uh, seen a little bit of it. Clips of it. That's so good. I haven't seen the full things of it. His makeup is amazing. His it's, whole costume is amazing. Yeah. It's That's incredible. what I mean by when I say like B rated costume design to where it's like you it's recognizable but mm-hmm. it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, I thought it was decent. I mean that wig was something else. No, I think they meant to do it like that. Oh yeah. To make it look rough. <laughs> and, I, and I like that. That's hilarious. He's just painted like metallic blue. <laughs> <in his face. laughs> yeah, cuz everyone goes on and he's like this professional superhero but he looks mm-hmm. pretty fucking rough yeah. the entire time he's doing it. That's great. And I love it. Captain Planet. Oh, I haven't seen Fire. it yet. Water. It's on YouTube. Earth. Yeah. Air. It's Heart. Don Cheadle. And it's Don Cheadle tired of their shit. Don yeah. Cheadle. So tired of their shit. It's, it's so great. Is it like new? Did they like just come out? No, it it's been out for a while. It's really old. No, 2014? Somewhere around there. Yeah. That cool. seemed, that's weird. Yeah. That's old. It's It's five years old now at this point. Just over. Which, in, well, see, when in I was terms thinking, of the internet, is old. Well, when I was thinking old, I was going to go to the mid-2000s. Or, like, yeah, mid-2007, 2008. Yeah. But I'm like, wait, whoa. Nope. It's not like Laser Fart, though. Got to go 14, 16 yeah, yeah. area now. Because Laser Fart was, what, early, mid-2000s? Mm-hmm. I'm glad they didn't get copy strike, copyrighted. Laser oh. Fart. Oh, the Captain Planet thing? No, Laser Fart. Oh. Well, I guess there was no music. They don't care about pictures. <laughs> Damn. Hard. Unless it's a video. They yep. care. They really care. Did that work? Did something get flagged on the last podcast or? No. Oh, thank God. No, nothing. Everything's kosher. I was very upset when I found out that Adobe Free, I thought it said royalty free, but I'm guessing not. For uh, the Blade and Sorcery video I did, and completely flagged uh-huh. for copyright. It's still up, but. The bullshit. Demonetized. That's what it. No. Yeah, the demonetized the mon- uh, the you know the money that we make right now. But we need viewers like you to spread the word so we can get 2,000 subscribers. It'd be great. Help us. That's help the us next help goal. You. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Share with all your friends. Yeah, let him give you your spiel. We come out with new videos every week. We are available on Spotify. Um, this is going to be episode 34, technically, because we lost the last one, right? Yeah. What? I don't know what you're talking about. We didn't do the last one. There was no, no, there was no last one. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. We didn't lose it. We didn't fail to record it. But uh, what? <laughs> yeah, feel free to continue what? giving us your requests in terms of what some of our live action videos are going to be. We've uh, deduced that we're going to do a live action uh, partial American Dad, but now we're even considering. <laughs> we we got to put it together. Yeah, but what was the other one we were going to do? Uh, oh, dude, Naruto. Dude, dude something with Heelys. Yeah. Don got some Heelys. Oh, yeah, I got some new Heelys. Don, let's Don talk about your Heelys. Yeah, I'll put a. Here's a little picture of what they look like. They're Simpsons Heelys. Ooh, they're really yeah, nice. Yeah, dude, they're pretty sweet. He's looking pretty fly. Yeah. I mean, I'm slowly learning on how to heal. I never had them when I was young, so I, I didn't. I don't have the muscle memory of healing. <laughs> he doesn't have the heal memory. <laughs> They're really cool though. The healing's fun. I like healies. Yeah, I've never, n- never had healies as a kid either. It's one yeah, of those things where it's like, oh, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Watching those kids go up and down the hallway. They were so fast. Dude. Like at a grocery store too. Oh yeah. Just clear, clear down an aisle. Anywhere where there's like clean linoleum. Oh yeah. <laughs> what did your headphones get weird? Yeah, the left audio. I think I nudged the. So I nudged something in the left audio is uh no longer available, but it's fine. How about now? How about now? How about now? Oh, that's better. There you go. I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. Sometimes that's all you gotta do. And sometimes you just, you gotta, just gotta, gotta smack gotta... it on the ass and unplug it and plug it back in. I don't know about smacking it on the ass. You don't smack your computer in the ass when you hard when you hard reset it. Be no, like, come on! I smother it with a pillow when I hold the button down. Just <laughs> shh. It's okay. The fans just time. going so hard. <laughs> it's just a little cry for help. It's like, no, just shh. Power down <laughs> right before it powers down. And like, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's giving his last air. <gasps> That's the first sign that computers are truly sentient. They're becoming sentient. I know. 
I don't like thinking about it. Have you guys seen um, Sentience? Uh, Ex Machina? No, I've been meaning to watch that. It's so good. No, I have not seen it. It's so good. Ex Machina. Wait, what's um, it on? What streaming platform? I don't know if it's on any of them now. I watched it a little while ago, though, on Shit. Netflix. Um, it's, uh, so it's about this guy at the, who works at this company who gets randomly selected by the CEO who's some tech genius, like like a young, independent variation of Steve Jobs. Huh. Like, super like out there. And he selects one random guy. And he's like, hey, come over to my private estate on like 500 acres of land. And come test this new product. Or not necessarily product, but come like hang out and like do some tests with this AI that he builds. And he runs like a series of psychological tests um, <laughs> while <laughs> while the guy's talking to the machine. It's crazy. Huh. It's so good. Crap. Definitely I, recommend. I'm that. a sucker for those kinds of movies, though, where they're like really mind-bending. I should have something to follow up with that, but I just got lost in your story. Um, have you guys seen Time Trap? That was on Netflix for a while. It may even be a Netflix original, so it might still be on there. Nope. Time it's Trap. It's about a, uh, uh, like a cave spelunker, like geologist, um, teacher. He's been searching for, um, the owners of this lost Volkswagen van for a long time, <laughs> and then he finds, I'm giving you, like, the very early preface of it, because I don't want to give like too much away. Like the synopsis, almost? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and he is trying to figure out where they went because there were his parents who just disappeared when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, he finds a cave that they could have possibly wandered into. Um, he gets lost in said cave three days later, all of his students go and try and find him. And, um, that's when stuff really hits the fan. Like it, it gets pretty aggressive pretty quick, (laughs) but um, it's pretty tense. It goes up that hill fast. Yeah. Huh? It's uh, about a cave that basically is impervious to the time of the world. So, like, hundreds of years can pass you in, like, an hour. While you're in it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, there's a lot within that, but that's that's, that's, that's about crazy. as much information as I can give you there. That's I'll, gnarly. Yeah. So. That's fucking wild, dude. I gave, away like, I gave wild. away, like, the big, like, kabunkle at, like, the 45-minute mark. So. Damn. Well, thanks for saving me 45 minutes. Yeah. But we'll there's hop. a lot that happens after that. I'm going to hop in at the 45-minute mark of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already know that just first. See, just see what happens. Like, yeah, all right. That, that makes, I've got it. Everyone may need to watch Interstellar, too. It's another movie. Interstellar yeah. was great. Um, I would like to go back and rewatch it because I watched it when it came out in theater, and I thought it was great. And then I need to see if it still holds up. All right. It's Christopher Nolan, right? It's a Christopher what? Nolan movie. Is it? I'm pretty sure My it's Christopher fun. Nolan. My phone's about to die. Yeah, I did check no. Netflix, though. It looks like Ex Machina is no longer on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, it's so good. I thought, of, when you said it, I first thought of uh, Deus Ex Machina, the game series. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I played some Ex Machina before. The <laughs> game series is dope. <laughs> what was I looking up again? <laughs> uh, Interstellar. Yes. I hate that. Inter- ah, this and Ex Machina came out in the same year. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! What a year for movies. What year was that? Okay. Oh my God! This came out in 2014. There's no way. Oh. Interstellar. Yeah. Now I feel <laughs> like time has really <laughs> kind of is... gotten away from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard what, to hear. What, what, what do you think it was made in? Uh, I thought uh, it might have like been released like 2016, 2017. But to tell me that it came out the year after I graduated high school, like. What <laughs> blows my fucking mind that that's even a that's concept. like seeing like I'll, I'll see posts on Reddit and stuff and they're talking about like when the first Black Ops came out they're like man that was great I was like ten years old I'm like hmm what whoa <laughs> like yeah that's a shot to the I chops. wasn't halfway through high school already <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't yes. my sixth Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been riding you, this you train. There's, there's kids out there that don't know when the first the first zombies came out of. They don't know it came from World at War. So you're telling me that they think zombies came from Black Ops? Th- they just don't know when it started. Oh my god! They're oh. like, I don't know. Call of Duty's always had zombies. I'm like, yeah, but did you know how to get to the zombies, man? You had to go through the campaign, <laughs> and it was a special thing. You're like, what the fuck is this? I remember like, it scared the hell out of me. Yeah, it was creepy. 
I was like, what the fuck? I'm mm-hmm. like, and then big red letters, Nazi zombies. I'm like, whoa, it's like a B movie. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. In the single most iconic, there's two iconic maps for me anyway for Call of Duty Zombies. It's that first map and then Der Rise or the two iconic maps for me. Der Rise. Uh, and the fourth one in World at War zombie map where you doing the uh, <clears throat> all the generators. You could pack a punch your gun. It was the I first don't. time they introduced the pack a punch machine. Yeah. I don't know if I ever actually played that map. Oh, dude, that's World of War. That's the OG map. That map sets up pretty much to what Zombies oh, wait, is in now. The, oh, hold on. In the house? No, no, World of War. That's Black Ops. When they're in the oh, theater? That's Black Ops? When no, they're... not the theater. Oh. I'm talking like the like, two story, like really shittily run down like uh, that that's the very first map yeah i've only yeah. played that one in the original world of war yeah that one's iconic as hell yeah. there were th- but i've never played Doris or however derise i don't know how to say it either uh, it's german but it's great it's it's amazing spend numerous nights numerous hours playing that don's was house there, was there was there only three on world at war because it was knocked on toten mm-hmm. then there was the asylum it was like uh when they introduced the uh the drinks, perks, the yeah, per- the colas and stuff. Yeah, that, that one was difficult. Thing. Yeah, and then uh, Dear Ice came out, and then they had the colas and the pack a punch machine. But you had to like turn all the generators on mm-hmm. and go back to the start of the map, and then you can. Throw then them you in can there. finally pack a punch mm-hmm. as long as you have five thousand. But the most underrated one in World at War is the swamp. I love the swamp. Ah, uh, that was okay. That was the yeah, other one. Yeah, it was just people didn't like it because it was so big. Mm-hmm. It was bigger than Dear Ice, but it was it was great because you had traps. You had multiple ways to dodge zombies, a zip line Mm -hmm. to trail some zombies, and then you hit that, and it's like, losers, and go back upstairs. (laughs) I'm trying to remember all the ones in Black Ops, because it was Kino Der Toten, which is the Theater of the Dead, and then there was Five in the Pentagon. Uh, Ascension. Oh, that's right, where they introduced the zombie monkey things. Yeah, because you were at the Russian uh, launch station. Yeah. There's Ascension, and then there was... The Moon. The moon was the very last one that came out, and then there was Shangri-La, which is like an old temple. Yeah, Shangri-La, you're playing at the, because, yeah, all the traps and shit. Mm -hmm. And you had to, like, solve ancient Aztec puzzles. To get to the Pack-A-Punch at the top of the temple? Yes, I remember it now. It was difficult. That one was hard as shit. And it was huge. It was a big map. That sounds awesome. Those were great, though. Yeah, the moon was really cool, too. I liked that. I was like, dude, we're on the moon. Mm-hmm. Well, and what was always cool, and I'm sad that I can never do most of them, was the Easter eggs for each map. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the moon had the coolest Easter egg. Like, I watched the video Didn't for you it. you blow up the earth or something? Yeah, you blow up the damn earth. You just <laughs> missile it. There's a nuke on the moon. But it's just so difficult to do the Easter eggs to get everything set up to do it. Because I just watched the video yeah. of people mm-hmm. doing it. It's literally a... 12 step program mm-hmm. to get this easter egg to go off and you have to hold a zombie for so long and that alone is difficult yeah it was always hard keep, keeping that one straggler you have one person kiting it around the map mm-hmm. and everyone else is like getting shit ready <laughs> yeah just <laughs> shooting all the easter egg. well because sometimes it would die too randomly and it's like well okay hope you guys are ready mm-hmm. <laughs> Here <laughs> next we go. round yeah because he would blow his legs off so they had to crawl around but then he would just die randomly if, yeah. if you got so far away from it. It would just it, well, and then after so long too, like you like ten minutes would go by and then mm-hmm. it would just die. And it's like, no, we need more time. <laughs> you don't understand the setup. Yeah. Like uh, Black Ops Two on the train or on the bus. Oh, uh, that one was so cool. I loved that map. Mm-hmm. It, that map was really sweet. But that Easter egg, it was kind of difficult, but you could do it because mm-hmm. it was easy to kite things around because you could just run where the bus would go. Mm-hmm. You could just kite it around there, but the fact that it was just in the middle of the map to do the Easter egg, and it's just kind of blinded because mm-hmm. you're running through mist and corn. It's like, I can't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I had that, for a while, I had that path memorized going through the corn maze um, <laughs> to find the little table to put, like, the meteor and the, the other thing and get that lightning guy to be summoned. And then you had to, like, get him under the lamp post. Yeah, because you had to trap him there, Like I think. a specific lamp post, too. I'm like... It was difficult. I don't even remember. We did it once, and I don't even remember what the payoff was. I forget. I forget, too. I don't know. I think we killed the lightning guy, and, like, I don't know. I feel like we trapped him. Oh, didn't we have to trap him in a room? I think we trapped him in a room, because we used the tower to catch him. Mm -hmm. 
because we had to turn the tower on, and then we trapped him in a room because the doctor or whatever. No, the little girl was talking to us. Yeah. Someone was talking to us to tell yeah. us to capture him, and we did. But it was difficult. It took a long time. A lot of deaths. Because you got to do it right, but you can't have the waves to be too high to where mm-hmm. you can't survive the waves mm-hmm. while you're setting it up. Cause it's like you have to do it between waves 1 and 20. Yeah. <laughs> Anything after that. Even after 15, it got really hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 15 like, is where you're kind of... Your climb is getting steeper. You got, you're running out of time. Is Are we talking Black Ops 2 right now? Yeah. Yeah, for that map. Yeah. I don't know. I Once I started to learn how to run trains... That part wasn't necessarily as hard for me. Well, trains isn't bad. It was just keeping the zombie alive. You just have to feed it every once in a while. Feed it? Yeah. Make it bite you. Yeah, make him, oh. m- let him hit you one time, and then you just See, I never running. did that. Is that why it would disappear? Maybe. That could that would explain a lot, then. Yeah. There may be, like, would, a timeout of, like, no interaction with the zombie. Like an idle time, yeah. where the game thinks it's just stuck. <laughs> That could that would make a lot of sense then. It on randomly disappearing. Well shit, man. Where were you? We could have survived we could have done a lot of Easter eggs. Yeah, seriously. Like the easiest one that we did, I know that you were with me when we did it was the western one. That we, one was really cool. We broke the guys out of the ghost house or whatever. Yeah, cuz we had to we had to get the the fucking hillbilly dude out and had to have him break the gate and to get to the mansion and mm-hmm. then go through the mansion and like Avoid all the ghosts and shit in there. So many ghosts. Dude, I could never avoid. I would just sprint through the house. Yeah, that was like the only way to do it. You just yeah. had to, once you get in, you got to just run to the back of the house. Yep. <laughs> get to the 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 pond back there. I was going to say the, the garden. Yeah, yeah, the, the garden. Mm, yeah. And then you activate. I think that's the last part of it is when you get back there. Well, th- what happened? You go down like a little like path. I'm trying there's to remember like a, it all There's now. like a, like a spot spiral staircase that goes down one part of it oh, I, I just can't remember right. what happens after that what was i saying oh yeah you know what's really cool um there's a like zombie warehouse mode in boneworks mm-hmm. and there's one called i think lockout i think that's the mode it's called and it kind of reminded me of like a call of duty uh zombie easter egg thing so you're going around this warehouse and the zombies are constantly coming at you mm-hmm. and you just kind of fight them off and go in waves and whatnot. It's, it's a lot of fun. And you have to find these keys scattered throughout the map. There are different colored keys and like open different areas with them. Like one of them you have to like, as you kill zombies, they give you ammo. So every kill gets you ammo, headshot gets you more and then you use those, spend some ammo to get one of the keys. And eventually you find out where the last one is. And you break a few boxes, and you, like, go underground into this little secret room, and then you get, like, the gravity gun, essentially. Oh, damn. I was like, oh, dude, this is like a zombie's Easter egg. <laughs> this is cool. I had to hunt this down. I had to go through some steps. That's like when we first found out how to do the music in uh, the first Black Ops in the theater. Oh, yeah. Turning that on all the time was so cool. He hit all the mm-hmm. meteor chunks within the theater. Um. <laughs> oh, was it Black Ops 2 that was the... Uh, the George Romero one? Is that Black Ops 2? I want to say yes. Yeah, no, it is. Yes, yeah. because you back from the... De- or, oh, I can't remember. Something of the called. dead. Yeah, because you're in an ice... You're on a pirate ship. Yeah, and you have a big old George Romero fucking chasing you the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the OG zombie characters are locked behind that door or whatever. Yeah, that's they, right. They yell at you whenever you rock, walk by that door, which is a whole other Easter egg in itself, mm-hmm. which teleports them, I guess, to Shangu La, supposedly. Yeah. Is how that is connected. That's how they get to that place. Because when you hop into Shangu La, you're just kind of teleported. Mm-hmm. Like, you're literally dropped in. It's weird. But. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. Cause who'd you play as? You, play? you were uh, Danny Trejo, Buffy uh, the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, uh, Michelle Geller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Sarah Michelle Geller. Yeah. Sarah Michelle Geller. Uh, I almost said Michelle Pfeiffer. That's <laughs> 100% wrong. Not her. Um, shit, who were the last two? It was uh, Michael England, or not, you know, yeah, Robert Mike, England. Robert England. I was going to say it was Freddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Robert England, and then who the fuck? Oh, it was, uh, what's his face? Uh, freaking from Walking Dead and Guardians of the Galaxy. 
always forget his name. That could be anybody. What? I was going to say, that could be a lot of different people. <laughs> he may be your daddy, or he may be your father, but he ain't oh, your daddy. Oh, Yondu. Yondu. Yeah, Yondu, and uh, he was in like season one of The Walking Dead. Yeah, because they trap him on the roof in The Walking Dead. I've never seen The Walking Dead. Oh. Go I don't, to season I don't four, that's fine. <laughs> you said go to season four. And go up fun. to season four, and that's about it. That's disappointing. That's as far as I, I went. Still going. Well, no, it's still going, but like, it's got ten seasons. Yeah. Bro. Why? They're trying to be the new Lost. Cause it made money. They probably are the new Lost. It made cause... a lot of money. Well, actually, the viewer count's gone down a lot. Yeah. In the last like three years. Good. It just needs to stop. It does. Needed to die a while ago. But it's also like I've never seen Breaking Bad. It's pretty good. I liked it. I waited till after the hype for it was done because. It was just everywhere at the time, mm-hmm. so it's like, even if I was going to watch it, the odds of it getting spoiled for me are pretty damn high, mm-hmm. so I'm just going to kind of wait. Yep. That's how I felt with uh, Game of Thrones, I haven't seen any of Game of Thrones either. I watched the first four seasons. It was good. The first four seasons are really fucking good. The later four seasons, though, are meh. They I jumped just... the shark, they're going downhill. They jumped the dragon, they're going downhill. <laughs> Apparently, it was like mostly pretty good, except for the finale. The finale that just like carpet bombed the whole series. <laughs> That's the dirtiest thing you can do to a show, too, is just ruining how it's ended. Well, it's because he's not finished writing it, so they had no more source material to go off of. So they just came up with their own. Yeah, shit. I think yeah. Or, I think around season six they had to deviate away from the books and make their own story. Mm. Shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I think I remember seeing him saying that he didn't expect them to catch up to him Yeah. in the show. It's like, yeah. what do you expect, man? One, they're going to skim a lot of things anyway. Mm-hmm. And two... They have to. You, well, and two, you can do a lot of things visually quicker than you can writing it down. Mm-hmm. And it takes him forever to fucking come out with books. <laughs> and it takes him forever to write the books, but he is one guy writing a book, so it's like... Yeah. yeah. And he, he makes sure it's damn good. Exactly. Yeah, and they've all been great, so it's like... Quality that's over quality. That's why the first four seasons are so good, because they're based on the books. Yeah. You're like, damn, that's awesome. I just like to think about when Brian goes up to George R. R. Martin with his idea after taking all that Adderall. <laughs> He's like, oh, this what's is he just called a bunch that? of sci-fi and, uh, fantasy like, Cliches yeah. crammed into one. Mm-hmm. Space Shire 7. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, every time I think of George R. R. Martin, that's, who I th- that's what I think about. I will say that... It's the, just like when I think of uh, George or Bill, the famous videographer in like early 2000s, big guy, George Moore? Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. Michael Moore? Yeah. The documentary Anytime I think guy about him, yeah, I just think about uh, American Dad, where he goes Those up and... Those Angelina Jolie's house. I'm going to go console this <laughs> this grieving mother. Is that Angelina Jolie? <laughs> So funny. Oh, sure. There's a minor in rated R movie. <laughs> Drags him out. She's got the mag light. Ushers don't exist anymore. You dated yourself, American Dad. Yeah. Um. In terms of adaptations, that was first have you up, seen? That was first season. Have you seen the Resident Evil, the new Resident Evil show that came out on Netflix? Uh, what is it? Resident Evil, like. Fuck. Immortals I've, or something. I've seen the not Immortals. The cover tag, but I've never. I got I got like the name anything about. I wouldn't buy it. I haven't seen it though. Well, it's on it's on Netflix. You can watch. Yeah, I scrolled past it. I was like, "Oh, that's neat." It's not bad. It's uh, it's pretty good. It ties in more to the games than any of the live action stuff does. <laughs> How the animated ones always do. <laughs> animated ones are great, and I hate the live actions for their their missed opportunity. The source material is that the source material is there. How do you fuck that up? Uh huh. They were trying to do what Underworld was doing at the time and what matrix had kind of paved the way for Mm -hmm. was to and blade bro (laughs) wesley snipes up in this bitch (laughs) wesley snipes bro dude blade tripped me out as a kid oh infinite darkness is what it was called okay yeah oh yeah it's not bad but it's hilarious because it's set after resident evil 4 events take place Okay. Because the the president talks about Leon, you saved my daughter. I'm forever indebted to you. <laughs> I trust any word you say. And they bring that up like five times within the movie. The president does, and it's just hilarious. 
It's just like, oh, Leon, I forgot how much of a badass you were. <laughs> oh, yeah, you lived through the events of Resident Evil. Oh, and you saved the president's daughter. Leon, Leon you're badass. <laughs> Leon, I will literally do anything for you right now. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Anything you want. Like, anything. Anything. It, it's, it's great. Because there's a picture of Ashley on the president's desk, and he looks at her. And I'm like, this bitch. So all I can think of is just PTSD of me in the chapel, of her just screaming, getting carried away as I'm getting covered in crossbows. <laughs> Leon's a badass. <laughs> it's great. It, it's, it's hilarious because it ties in to games, so they always talk about the events of the games without referencing what they did in the events of the games. Yeah. Because Claire and Leon are both in it. You were there for Raccoon City when they wiped it off the map. Yeah, and I tried to save those women and children, or the families who couldn't make it out. It's like, yeah, you did. But you also did a bunch of other shit, too. Right. <laughs> like, it wasn't just that. You had a tough time, man. But it's good. It wasn't that bad. It's like four episodes. Did you ever see... Which movie was it? Afterlife? Did you ever see that one? Yes. Were they in the airport? What's... Uh, or is that Degeneration? That? No, that's the live-action movie. Oh, no, never mind. I'm thinking it's still the animated ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the one where they brought in Wesker. The live action movies. No, I did not see that. I Like I said, I stopped watching after the first one. <laughs> that was a weird one. <laughs> they they upset me. And they upset me more that you told me why she's even in the movie. Why, uh, what's her face? Um, the, the main actor. Yeah. Main actress. Uh, Mila, Mila Jovovich. Because she was with the director. They were in relation, so he's like, here you go, you want to be a lead role? I want to be a star in this movie franchise I'm making? That'll be great. Should have seen how, what, who Leon was when he finally showed up. Doesn't look like Leon. <sighs> I only imagine he looked like hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he looks awful. And I bet his voice wasn't even close to what it should sound you like. You couldn't have convinced me that that was Leon. <laughs> yeah, they had to tell it. you, they're like... I'm Leon S. Kennedy. I'm like, no, you're fucking not. You got long black hair. You're like Leon a Scott five Kennedy. Shadow. Like <laughs> five o'clock. Yeah, so it's just like in the Spidey verse. You're Leon Scott Kennedy, the <laughs> one with a <the> middle name. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're Leon, but you're not him. I'm, I'm Leon Sriracha Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I love Resident Evil Four. What does the S even stand for? When Salazar asks Leon, what's his middle initial stand for? And then something happens where you don't even get an answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the only guy to ask him, because I'm curious, is it Stanford? <laughs> Stanford Smith. Is it Singapore? <clears throat> Stanley? Stanley Elnats. Stanley Elnats the fourth. <laughs> Stanley Elnats, please rise. <laughs> Stanley Elnats the fourth. <laughs> I will say my Henry, favorite. Dude, Henry Winkler was his dad. In Covered in bees. That's crazy. Covered yeah, in bees. Exactly. <laughs> See, and so it's funny because I had never really like truly sat down and watched Little Nicky until fairly recently. And just seeing all the wacky shit that they pulled off in that movie, I'm like, how? It's a gold like, mine, dude. It, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's underrated. All because, right, Adrian, get in the flash. <laughs> it's underrated because you have to have an open sense of humor. You really do. To yeah. be able to watch it. So it's like, if well, you don't have that, it's going to be oh, kind of dumb to you. I can't remember the name of the movie, but the one with him, Brendan Fraser, and uh, Adam Sandler, Brendan Fraser, and... Um, oh, uh, Airheads? Yeah. I was going to say Hollywood Caveman, or... Uh, Hollywood Caveman? Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, oh, um, Encino Man? Encino Man. Encino Man, sorry. Yeah. Right, Hollywood Caveman. <laughs> Encino Man, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember. What's his name? Sean Astin? Pauly Shore? No, that's the 50 first. Steve Buscemi. The Leaning Tower. Steve Buscemi. Jeez. Yeah. I was immediately thinking he was a fighter fighter before being an actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Um, but yeah, they're rockers and they take over a radio station and like hold everyone there hostage. <laughs> With fake guns. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just trying to get the record play on the air, man. Because we freaking are rock and roll. Like, it's so funny. Brendan Fraser is like the perfect... Like, wannabe rocker 90s dude. It's disgusting. Because <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Fraser's a 90s treasure. Adam Sandler's just like this super weird, like, just super about drums guy. 
yeah. that movie. He's 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 a nut. Who does he? Oh, what's the name of the actress that he like ends up fucking Shit, <laughs> later on in that movie? I don't remember. It's been years since I've seen that movie. Oh, I watched that one relatively recently too, just because I'd never seen it, and I'm like, I didn't realize this was a thing. I have to see what well, like early these kinds of movies like before. Ow. Um. Happy Madison Productions got big. That's what I'd. Oh, love. like if the you, movies that led to Happy Madison getting to. Yeah, you want to know what, what I truly was. would love for this company to be like to Happy be Madison, our own Happy Madison, where we can just continuously employ all of our friends to be the actors and actresses in our movies. I would love that. We need to make a movie first. Yeah, and we do, and it's strong bully. <laughs> <laughs> strong bully. <laughs> That's it. That's all. That's the title. Da, 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 There's not even a summary da, beneath da, da, it. It's just strong boy. And it but we're gonna like have the, to do like the tenacious it, D and the pick of destiny, like Kyle and KG. On the intro? Or uh, JB and KG. No, it's gonna be <laughs> on, like Monty. Uh, no, on the, I'm talking the poster. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be strong boy standing on where the, they're doing uh, the Pride Rock. Oh, like on the album cover. Yeah, where they're doing yeah the pick of destiny, <laughs> oh. like uh, Michelangelo's painting of Adam and. God. Yeah, I guess. Is I don't that Adam? I don't Jeebus? fucking know. I think it's like man and God or something. I don't know. Jeebus I was thinking Jeebus. of like the movie poster where they're like the pick is in the middle yeah. of the screen. They're like reaching for it. They're like, oh. Yeah. That's but that's what their poster is referencing. Mm-hmm. And then, but yeah, I want it to do it, make it be Stromboli version of that tenacious D one. It Stromboli. would be great. It'd be hilarious. We need to. What about that Amazon thing? I don't want to talk about the Amazon. What about that Amazon tracking that Don just informed us of? I was going to say, so Don has heard a few more horror stories than I have. So I will say mine really quick. I hear that they track you like through little computer, (laughs) like through not only through video, but through like uh, sensors in your work area in the warehouse. And if you are idle for five minutes at a time, that is you getting flagged and grounds for termination. Come out with a Nerf gun and they shoot you. <laughs> I, dude, I <laughs> right would. in the face. Yeah, it's Google. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't be mad. I feel like my boss was telling me to get back to work, and their way of telling me is shooting me with a Nerf gun. I'm fine. Oh, yeah. Shoot me with a Nerf gun. Like, like, oh, yeah. Even if you hit me in the face, it'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, there's way, there's worse ways to hear this. Exactly, yeah. This is a nice little reminder. I'll take a like, shot okay. to the face. Yeah, no, if it was a Nerf, if they just came out with a Nerf gun, that would be a completely different story. But what were all the ones about the driver uh, oh, position? Like, so you the, have the, the drivers will have the app on their phone that you scan packages when you deliver them to notify the person that it's been delivered and you take a picture of it and stuff. Um, I guess the app tracks like when you're not using the app, if you're using it for anything else. Um for certain periods of time if you're not like on break or if you're uh it knows what if you use it while you're driving that's mostly what they use it for it's uh if you use it while you're driving like the vehicle's on at all then they'll hit you for it so yeah and also if your seatbelt is off before the engine's off so you gotta like shut it off take off your seatbelt, and then you can start using your phone for whatever yeah, that sign is, out really quick and then you can. Yeah, that is crazy. Over. You get that would be, which is crazy because like I that's just putting more stress on the worker themselves outside of their actual work. Uh huh. Because those things go against their job. So mm-hmm. it's like, well, if I miss these, there goes my job. But I'm not trying to deliberately do this. I don't know. That's rough. Yeah, and there's like a camera in the vehicle too. Yeah. But, I mean, that's how, like, UPS is and FedEx are, too. They have mm-hmm. cameras in their trucks as well. Yeah, and they also have, uh, like, these GPSs to track you to make sure where you're at is, wh- what route you took is where you say you were at because they can go mm-hmm. back on your route. But they also design their routes to never take left turns because you spend more time sitting there at a light waiting to make a left than you do at a right mm-hmm. because you can go on a red. Yeah. So... I saw a thing on Reddit that some guy was breaking down that they specifically design against lefts. They only take rights. And I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. 
It saves gas and it saves time. Mm -hmm. They broke down that they save like thousands of dollars and thousands of gallons of gas a year just by not taking less (laughs) because you're not sitting there waiting. That's actually genius. And I try to do that, but fuck, some places are left. Uh (laughs) Sometimes I gotta go left, man. I'm not going through to turn around. That's like I get that intersection now where you gotta make a U turn over Yander. Down the hill next to the park where that Starbucks used to be. Oh, yeah. I hate it. See, well, I, I get it. It's to avoid stopping making a left. Uh-huh. So I get it that they're trying to save the flow, but yeah, it's kind of long and stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and there's still people that will break it anyway. They can just make that left yeah. anyway? I see it all the time. Huh. It's I don't go over there that much. Shit. I used to live over there. It's it's weird. I don't I don't see a way to where you can't make I don't see a way to make a left turn fluid. There's not a way. There's not. It would have to be unless you make the traffic go over yeah. the traffic. Well, that's why they have their own dedicated like amount of like okay now you guys go, and then we determined that all right now we can allow opposite sides to go so like one will be turning and one's going because they have a higher traffic flow well that's the thing what they were trying to do with that intersection is to stop that to where no one really had to stop but the only way to really do that without making it difficult is making just ramps everyone's got to go over each other and then no one has to stop have you been on um just south of the big movie theater the dixon line the connector you know which the two one I'm talking about? You're talking about the two one over there? Yeah. Next to the FUD Ruckers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the butt fuckers. Oh, you I've never been to FUD Ruckers, but yeah, what about it? Um if you go south down that road, just a little bit like to the next immediate like major intersection, they've done something similar. Oh really? Oh, I yeah. haven't gone over there in a while. It's like it's comprehensive, I guess, but because you're coming from a single lane going north on that street. And then it's like, oh, if you want to take a left, it tells you before. It's like, if you want to take a left onto this next, like, lighted intersection, you have to turn right and then go around a U-turn down there and then be able to go left that way. Huh. It's It's crazy. It turns into, like, three lanes. Ramps everywhere. Everyone were just overpasses. Yep. Just. (laughs) All ramps and off ramps everywhere. Who cares? That's all we need. If, if If I've learned anything from City Skylines, overpasses. (laughs) <laughs> noodle intersect intersections and just overlapping roads <laughs> everywhere roundabouts everywhere it's the only way you mitigate traffic that's like a weird thing i see on like facebook a lot i'll see like relatives and people will be like oh man they put a roundabout and bl- this way i mean roundabouts are stupid i'm like what the fuck are you talking about roundabouts are great mm-hmm. I don't see know, like, i was like well it's confusing i'm like how the fuck is this confusing <laughs> people don't even know how to use a four-way stop and that's like that's pretty I, goddamn I self-explanatory. That's, yeah, self-explanatory. I always slow down to be the last guy there. Yep. So it's like, I want you guys to know you'd go. Mm-hmm. Please. I know I used to knock on roundabouts because I felt I only knocked on them because everyone else, I didn't believe they had the ability to use roundabout properly. So I'm like, great. In, in a way, they're easier to use. They're way easier. They're way easier. You like, don't stop. Uh-huh. You, you just, just keep going. You slow check down just if a there's a car bit. over there yeah. and then go. <laughs> yeah, you're only looking one way. You're not paying attention to three separate like incoming yeah. traffic. Well, and realistically, you should be kind of matching speed enough to be able to flow into a spot big enough for your car. Well, yeah. that's yeah, that's how they're designed. Like people stop completely there mm-hmm. to let the car oh in. It's God. like no, the thing is, is they're making a turn. They're already going slow. You can make this merge in. Uh huh. So by the time that you get in and I come up. The guy will like, be past me, like, and I can I, squeeze in behind I him. I wish I remembered the name of that that roundabout that they have in France. That has like oh, that really huge oh, one yeah. around the the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like a four lane like, roundabout. <laughs> yeah, like just watch them do it. I that's, mean, that's a way more confusing concept. That's a scary roundabout. It's, a, it's <laughs> very scary, but like you know, you're just like, all right, I can make this little tiny gap, and everyone's just nose to butt around this thing. When it's like. They don't they understand exactly that they need if in. you're on the inside of the roundabout, you're not turning out of this roundabout. I hope you know that. <laughs> yeah. But I've seen some people be like, oh, this is my turn. Come from the inside out. It's like, oh, my God. 
You idiot. I hate that. <laughs> Can't stand it. It's like if you wanted to come out of it, stay on the outside. Mm-hmm. If you're just kind of coasting to the next one, get on the inside. Speaking of infrastructure, I do believe that no matter how many times we attempt to widen our freeway, it is not going to be enough. We have to do something else. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I, I was reading something like wider, wider freeways don't solve anything. They don't. Because like, doesn't no matter, it add more traffic? Yeah, yeah, in a way it does, yeah. And at some point it has to slim down too. Uh-huh. Like, anyway... Like, I don't know. I mean, it. Do, I don't think it. It only starts to slim down once you get to that other major city, um, to the south of us, or to the west of us. Yeah, didn't they widen it up though? They're. I mean, they're actively tried doing to. It, like, I know it's like a bridge there. there. Yeah. So it's a lot harder to try and widen that because it's yeah. a bridge. And they can't exactly like get rid of it. We just need a tram or not a tram. Uh, tro- trolley, subway, maybe. I don't think we're big uh, trolley enough. For, and, trolley in downtown would make sense. I don't but, think we're big enough for a subway yet. Honestly, I mean, our subway would be our subway. If anything, or subway. <laughs> I'm just thinking of food. Now. Yeah, seriously. Uh, our subway would be from here to MH to O. That would be the only beneficial subway to system. O. To O. To O. Like O. o. Like diesel's O. No. Oh, I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> you know. No, the, okay, no, you know I would the, oh. no, I would argue. Well, because I, that would be uh, a good to we, get through the whole valley. Yeah, but we already have trains, right? So why yeah, we couldn't would. we just put those underneath, and that way we could go M H N because the C all the way up to M C. Because like, the train runs along the the river, which is along the canyon, so you can't really get under that. We go into the mountain. <laughs> you can't really get under that. <laughs> the fucking. But there's two guys from Texas that are buying land over there already. Animals. That are starting to tear. That are gonna start turning into that mountain. They bought up all the public land. Yeah. Over there. You make so I can never uh, think they're gonna use it for resources. But a trolley would be great. I would love to hop on a trolley. trolley I would love it to be an old school like London trolley to where you can just hop on and off. You're just oh, it's going by. You're running up to it. You're listening hop. to orchestra music playing <laughs> in the background for your turn of the century role as a fucking businessman. I, I've in got my little uh, newspaper uh, hat. I don't even know what that. What's is. the situation, Saj? Yeah, I don't know what those style of hats are called. I don't either. But I, honestly, I want one. I know I won't be able to rock it, but I want one. I want it, it anyway. Yeah, I want it anyway. I want it anyway. It'd be sweet to hop on those trolleys. I mean, San Francisco has trolleys, and those are pretty sweet. It's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same concept. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> the exact same thing. <laughs> I've seen a bu- I've seen a couple uh, car crash videos of people crashing the trolleys. That would and, suck. And it's hilarious because the trolley's on a fixed track. Right. It's not going to move. You need to move out of its mm-hmm. way. It doesn't go anywhere. And yep. it's funny that people think... That they can play chicken with some of these trolleys and don't move, and the trolley's just kind of trucking along. People the track. think they can play chicken with trains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's on a fixed system. It's not gonna move out of the way. <laughs> you do understand how much energy is required just to move this thing and this load in this direction. <laughs> yeah, we have the right of way for a reason. Train tracks only go one way for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> There's no brakes on Could the you grape train. Imagine an eight-lane like train highway. Well, isn't that like isn't that how most train yards are? Like when yeah. the trains come into the yard, they're yeah. like twelve. Yeah, but wide. could you just imagine if they had that running all the time? Like how much more like pr- like just goods in general would be delivered via train? Yeah, but you know how much pollution and land. Uh, oh yeah, no, I know. Development. It'd I'm be not. Doing. Sa- I'm saying like. If we evolved to the point where we used it as such, rather than just single tracked all our way across the country, well, see, I think we could still do that with trains, but not on the ground. I mean, well, in the well, air, like air train, no, like Amtrak. <laughs> like you just I'm do. Just a, imagining Thomas the Tank. Yeah, <laughs> well, have you <laughs> airplane wings? You've been to Disneyland. <laughs> Yeah, I've been to Disneyland. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, you know those little Amtraks where it kind of yeah. just goes around the whole track. Yeah, kind of like those to where it's just post sitting above wildlife so you're not really disturbing it but it's still a train mm-hmm. but then it's undisturbed by nature so you can just make it a straight line <laughs> yeah. and then you can almost do like a bullet train because yeah. if you get it straight enough you could just haul dick like you're going across the deserts so it's just a straight line going 200 
That'd be crazy. You're just like, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we hope that we warmed you up really nicely to how fast this train's going to get, but we still got one more gear here for you. Let us kick it into high gear now. And the bullet train just starts hauling we'll severe lo- ass. <laughs> we'll be in Las Vegas in five minutes. You're leaving like uh, Dude, San how crazy Francisco. would that be? <laughs> how crazy would that be? Just be like immediately out of the city through those mountain ranges there. Well, that's why, I, that's why I think that idea Vegas. would be perfect. Cause bullet train? We weren't talking bullet train. Well, earlier. not bullet train. I'm talking about the train <laughs> system above, not on the ground, but above everything. To well, that's why I want to do the underground. Let's just dig. Well, because that's Cause more we'll find, resources. But we'll find resources there. Not really. Yeah, what but you're doing a lot of digging. But then it could collapse, too, because shit. Well, then it could also fall. But, but Well, so that's the thing, is it's not like deep earth mining, like what they do for like lithium, uh, like plants and all they that they mine shit. pretty deep for subways pretty deep but they don't mine thousands of feet deep for subways well no not yeah. thousands and so that's why i don't think it would be as much of an issue i i mean it's just my thing is getting through mountains like making a tunnel yeah i mean fuck they made tunnels for trains already well, why not just it. make a hole because <laughs> now you're Let's doing go. a tunnel underground <laughs> let's go you know what scrap all this and just arm the entire country with cargo bullet trains yeah, but why again, not? it goes back to the tracks. We don't have enough tracks. Oh, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's on I the same tracks we with cargo about. bullet yeah. trains, and everyone's just hitting well, each other. Well, that's the thing, though, is, like, imagine how much quicker you can get trains like that. Because they've already got the schedule down. They've already got the system in place for how trains are operating. You just replace all that with bullet train for cargo and passenger. Should we get done a lot? I mean... I understand there's got to be like probably some improvements to a bullet train to help cargo, depending. But I, mean, I think there need to be two track systems then: one for cargo, one for passengers, so you don't interrupt either. That'd be fair. So you but you could just get so much done with exactly, all bullet trains. It'd be so fast. Japanese, yeah. they're, they use bullet trains all the time. Yeah. Why do you think they're so much more advanced than us? Is because they have a consistent supply of fucking like or ingredients, or maybe because their government works together. That too. They work with their people. I've said it before in conversation. <laughs> I've said it before in conversation. I don't know if I've ever said it to you guys or on this podcast, but I swear to God, the only way that the human race is going to survive is if we all unite truly as one human species and realize that we need to get off this rock. Well, if I've ever seen ever any sci-fi movie ever or any anime, the fuck are we gonna go? We don't want to go anywhere. We just We're looking. We just have to. <laughs> we just have to have the ability. Checking to, out the planetary market. To, we you know, just, we're yeah. looking at our pickings. <laughs> we just have to have the ability to leave, the ability to sustain ourselves, and the ability to continue well, our so search for new life. That's what that's Elon. It. That's what Elon Musk. I watched a little clip of Elon Musk talking about that. He's like, I wonder how many planets out there that are one planet civilizations, like our own, that failed to get off their planet, mm-hmm. and then just over course of time, their sun killed their planet or whatever, and their planet died. Yeah. How many planets are out there like that? And I'm like, ooh. Because, I don't know what, scientists say that our pl- our sun will expand and eventually kill oh, yeah. our planets mm-hmm. billions of years later. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I wonder if we could ever get off. I mean, with the rate that we're going, I'd imagine we will, but something tells me that we are going to destroy the world's resources before we get an opportunity to truly do that. The, the main problem is getting to another habitable planet yeah because we we like, figured out getting off but like having something <laughs> to go something to go fast <clears throat> enough and to carry us to a different mm-hmm. solar system without us dying before we get there yeah the exactly. it's this this it's the sustainability like we launched voyager one in the 70s and like a few like 2012 or 2014 it finally like got to the edge of the solar system it took like 40 fucking years <laughs> yeah. to, to just leave the solar system. The people who sent that were probably either dead or close to dying. 40 years to us. Remember, time is relative. Well, and that, that's the other thing is if you can expand the human life cycle, lifespan maybe. You just have to. I mean, Or halt it like cryogenic freezing. Yeah, that would have to be it. But I was almost thinking of like um, if you consistently kept like Earth time. Like, while you were on whatever planet that you were exploring, and then you could, like... Well, that would be like making your own gravitational force area, because you'd have to be in your own bubble of time. Well, yeah. Like, like a time planet. bubble. Yeah. 
Just walk around on a planet at a time bubble. <laughs> and, and the only reason it got there in the first place is because didn't have fuel on it. Didn't have fuel pumping it through space. But, like, all of the planets would Grab would it. be lined up to slingshot it from one planet to the other. And it was, like, at the perfect time. That's genius <laughs> math right yeah, there. seriously. That's some... It's like, okay, at this time, it'll, it'll launch off of Earth. And then it'll get to Mars and slingshot off of the gravitational pull of Mars. And then slingshot over to Jupiter and Saturn... And then See, and that's not out. using fuel. So I wonder if you could do that same method to conserve fuel and then boost out of the solar system. Probably. Because yeah, that's what you do in Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get off the planet. <laughs> so I've never been in space. I can't either, but I watch videos of people doing it, and that's how they use, they'll use like the gravitational pull of the, like, the moon and the Earth and stuff to launch between that. Man, space is crazy. But still, like... I mean, humans only live so long. And if it exactly. takes that long just to leave the solar system, we'll never fucking get out of here. No. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's just our solar system. Yeah. And there's billions of them out there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and there's like You can't a, even go visit the next one. There's like a field. Uh, a, a quotation marks. So I might look it up later if you see what the actual like term for it is. But like, it's the like little bubble that our solar system is in. And outside of that is interstellar space, mm-hmm. which is... B- billions of miles of nothing and say aren't we kind of isn't our solar system surrounded by another layer of asteroids outside of that uh outside of that uh no nah. is that just the open no space? It's, there's just nothing just nothing there's just it's black nothing <laughs> space is fucking empty <laughs> that's why it's called space <laughs> it's a lot of space out there it's a lot of, well i didn't think space would be so literal spacey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's there's fucking nothing out there and oh. it's dark <laughs> you can't see anything yeah just because the sun's there doesn't mean it's lighting shit up it only goes so far yeah and that's crazy like you look at a sun in space it's like damn that lights up a lot of stuff out there i bet you could see anything no not really you get like 30 au away from it it's not lighting up anything you can't mm-hmm. see your hand that's why you gotta have your own your own lights oh snap I'm you ever s- seen uh Sorry, Dad, I'm going to stop you in your tracks right there. We're going to end uh, it at a 69 notice. Notice me, Senpai. 69. Ooh, Chan. Ha, 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 ha. Funny sex number. Ha, ha, funny sex number. <laughs> 69. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Let's Smoke About It. Episode 34. Tarty fire. Tarty fire. Thank you, Don. Thanks, Don. For being here. As always, let me, Dog touch, bless. let me touch your hand from this table. For I get out in a minute. Ugh. Thank you, Nookie Puss. Always. Thanks for uh, having me. I mean, we're for this. I mean, we're all three the hosts. So for this late I'd night, we'd be here for this late night episode that we did because every time everyone's schedules have changed. Yep. So, so are you adapt. saying that this is when, more than likely, when we're gonna try to do it every time? We might have to, depending on okay. the time frame. Adapt. Sorry. Overcome. Succeed. Good night, everybody. Good night.